Professor David Lowe is a man of many parts. He is the inaugural director of Deakin University's Alfred Deakin Research Institute and he has just launched an insightful biography on the life of Percy Spender, the, the highly influential Australian Minister for External Affairs back in the 1950s. Well, one of the things I've enjoyed doing in very recent times is publishing the life of Percy Spender, the late Sir Percy Spender, who was an Australian diplomat, foreign minister, member of the International Court of Justice, and all round one of the most international Australians we've had in the 20th century. Spender's life and his achievements are quite unique, I think. In his 16 months only, 16 months as Minister for External Affairs, these days we'd call it Foreign Affairs, 1950 to 51, Spender laid what I think would be fairly described as the foundations of Australia's modern foreign policy. In particular, he was one of the chief architects of the ANZUS Treaty, our security treaty with the United States and New Zealand. And ever since then, um, both sides of politics, Australian politics, have realised that this must remain a cornerstone. He was also very influential in setting up the Colombo Plan for aid to South and Southeast Asia. And so he um, charted a path, if you like. He began something which gathered momentum about Australia's burgeoning, slow but burgeoning relationship with a changing South and Southeast Asia. At the time, 1951, when the Colombo Plan began, um, Australia's relations with Asia were pretty ordinary, of course. This was the heyday of the so-called White Australia policy. But one of the biggest consequences of Australia's involvement in the Colombo Plan was the way in which it enabled um, scholarship students, Asian scholarship students, to get to Australia on certain programs for training and then return to their own countries. Now, that was perhaps the best known aspect of Australia's involvement in the Colombo Plan. And these days, um, it's fondly remembered by many Australians. They see that as the, the, the one good story amidst a time that was less good, especially in, in relation to white Australia. Percy um, had the temerity, he had the aggression um, in Cabinet, the temerity to stand up to other powerful politicians, including his boss, Bob Menzies, in order to push these things through. Because they weren't easy to push through. Neither ANZUS nor the Colombo Plan were easy victories in Cabinet. But he was um, a Sydney lawyer, wrong side of the tracks made good, and uh, he was a man very conscious of physical dynamics. He, he set up his offices with a desk um, a certain number of paces away from when you came in the front door so that he would establish a, a position of ascendancy over people who came to see him. He was that kind of person who knew about power, power in personal relationships and power in international relations hence the um, significance of um, securing a relationship with the United States. And there haven't been too many poli Australian politicians like him. Um, his impact in that short period um, as Minister for External Affairs and then also as Ambassador to the United States because he left that post in 1951 as Minister for External Affairs to become what is still our longest serving Ambassador in Washington until 1958. His time there was very influential in what he described as putting flesh on the bones of ANZUS, trying to strengthen the relationship with the Americans. Now, he also had a wonderful time too there. Washington in the 1950s was a pretty happening place in terms of cocktail parties and so on. Spender was a gregarious man. He loved that, loved that side of it too. Um, but if you wanted to sum him up in, in brief terms, he, I think, um, more than any of his colleagues, embraced the idea of the American century the idea that America would act as a powerhouse for the rest of the Western world. It would be something of a model in terms of um, providing the training ground, providing the model of industry, the technical expertise, which could flow out to other parts of a world. And more than any of his other colleagues, he was trying to harness Australia's future to that kind of vision. He, you know, you'd have to say that his successes um, probably um, weren't legion in the, to the extent that you can't harness Australia's as a small power to um, America's grandiose emergence on the world scene in any neat and fast way. But even within the, the short time that he had available to him in that period from, say, 1950 to 58, he did more to demonstrate to the Americans just how interested and, and how interesting a player Australia was in international affairs than I'd think anyone else would have done. Yeah, Percy Spender was an ambitious man and I think he always had in his sights the job of Prime Minister of Australia. 
Um, there are signs of a relationship with Menzies that was testy. Uh, the two clashed quite a bit. Um, for example, when uh, Menzies was incommun incommunicado on the high seas sailing to Washington DC, Percy Spender um, took the initiative. He forced the acting Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister Arthur Fadden, to commit Australian ground forces to the war in Korea. Uh, this is in the middle of 1950, before Menzies could be contacted. Spender did this because he knew he got wind of the fact that the British government was just about to announce that they were going to do that. They were going to send in ground troops. And he knew that if Australia just followed in the British wake, it would have minimal impact on the American ally. It would just look like they were 